Pérez. It's going to be a member of our third, it's going to be our third panelist, all right? And then our fourth panelist in the person of, I mean, this person really doesn't need more introduction, is uh, the director of studies of Rio's Academy and also the principal, I mean, the lead advisor of Olani Power Consulting, the firm of Estes of Rio's Avalu as well. So, he is also going to be a part of our panel. He's the person of ESG Olalu from our So those are our four panelists for, for today. They will be a part of this Zoom meeting for start to, to finish. Now, I should say this, that at some point, we will also have the privilege of having our, His Excellency, like I always call him, the second vice president of, of our Nubu profession, ESB, Victor Olamu, too. I will get to give a, a, short, a short speech to our host as, as well. All right, so I would like to introduce our speaker for, for the day. I would like us to please pay attention because, like I said, he's a seasoned professional, and uh, I know you're all looking forward to, to listening or to learning from him. All right, so I'm going to just introduce him to us so that we get an, have an idea of, of who he is. All right, so let me start. ESB Ni Fadogu is an estate survey and valuer. He has a background in estate management and valuation from Obafemi Awolowo University. He has professional qualifications in these areas from the Institute of Public Private Partnership, Angus Enterprise Value, and he has a skill, uh, he's trained in the skill of from Angus Enterprise Valuation Software Training. Then he is also from the company of direction course of the Institute of Directors, etc. He's like I said, he's a registered SS surveyor and valuer. He's also a chartered surveyor. He's a fellow of the Nigerian Institution of SS Surveyors and Valuers. He's a member of the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors. He's also a member of the Institute of Directors of Nigeria. He's an RICS assessor. He's an RICS counselor. Is a registered professional with the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria. Is also a member of the African Real Estate Society, and is also a fellow of the Certified Institute of Auctioneers of Nigeria. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, okay, I have just been notified now. I've just been notified now, um, I'd like to have double protocols because His Excellency, the president of the Nigerian Institution of Estates of Vian Valwa, our honorable president, ESV Wiki is in our midst this morning. So this is, I mean, today's a great day. So Your Excellency, sir, we are pleased to have you join us for this webinar. It's an honor to have you, sir. Thank you very much. And I mean, we can't have somebody like this and not have him join our panel. So we have automatically, I mean, it's like an executive order. We have, <laughs> we have to do that now. We have promoted him to be a part of the panel. So Your Excellency, you are welcome. You are part of our panelists now. At some point, we will want to hear from you in the course of this webinar. So without further delay, I'd like to welcome our speaker for the day, ESB Ni Fadoku, to just uh, take the floor. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I hope I'm audible. Hello. Can you confirm that you can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you clearly. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. 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 Good morning, everyone. Good morning, colleagues. Um, first, I would like to appreciate the organizers of this Rails Academy uh, who practically challenged me to come and speak on a topic we all know, 
we know how difficult it can be when one is requested to make a presentation uh, to colleagues on what they do day in and day out. So it was, it was a huge challenge, but I had to accept it and I thank them for that. Then on the issue of uh, when, when the panelists were being called, I had a lot of professors, this professor, that professor, and I remembered a story that happened about a professor who was invited to a conference to make uh, a presentation. On getting to the venue of the presentation, uh, he had to use the gents. Is uh, as they walked in, he walked in with his driver. He had to use the gents, so he gave his presentation, the file with the presentation. He gave it to his driver to to hold for him. Then the protocol officers, when they saw the driver, they just asked him, "Are you the professor?" And just as he was about to answer, "I'm the professor's driver." Before he mentioned driver, he said, "I'm the professor." They just ushered him to the high table. And he sat on the high table. The professor, you, after he used the gents, he joined the audience and he just whispered to him that he should just read the presentation in the file. So he read the presentation in the file. He read it very eloquently. And somebody asked a question. And his response was this. That question is very simple that even my driver can answer it. I will now call on my driver to answer the question. So he called on the professor to answer the question because the question was so simple. So when it's question time, I will also call on the different uh, drivers right. of the professor in the panel okay. to answer the questions. No problem about that, sir. Yeah. Okay. So the topic we have today is uh, property valuation and scope. Uh, I'll just share the I'll just share the screen so that yes. Okay. The topic is uh, property valuation and scope of valuation. Valuation is something we do every day. Uh, inspection is also what we do every day. But how do we tie this together? So when I was asked to make this presentation, I had to ask myself a few questions. And those questions in arriving at, how do I communicate uh, the thoughts in my mind to the audience? I now thought about uh, these six points. What, why, which, when, who, and how? What is inspection? Why do we conduct inspection? Which type of inspection do we, uh, do, do we carry out under certain circumstances? When do we carry out this inspection? Who carries out the inspection? How is the inspection carried out? These were the thoughts in my mind. And I thought if I ran through this, I'll be able to communicate uh, to the audience. So after formulation of this, I, I then came out with an outline of uh, the slides that I'll be presenting. So briefly, we'll look at, we'll remind ourselves about property valuation, what property valuation is. Then we'll also look at valuation process. How do we arrive at our opinion of value? What is the process? Then also, we'll look at the international valuation standards, the general standards. Uh, we, you can't be doing valuation in this age and not talk about International Valuation Standards, IVS. Then we'll look at the particular standards which governs inspection, which is IVS 103. We'll look at what inspection really is. We'll look at inspection planning. We'll look at the personnel. Then we'll look at the scope of valuation inspection. Then we'll also take some time to look at the tools required for valuation then inspection reports, then we'll then conclude. So if I have your permission, I would just like to go through the remaining 14 
slides, 13 or 14 slides. Yes. The next slide, uh, property valuation. This is just to remind us uh, about what valuation is. Valuation, so, sometimes it, it, it can be difficult for somebody to explain what he does every day without speaking uh, professional jargon, because that is important in communication so that you just deliver it uh, the ordinary for the ordinary man on the street to understand what you are doing. So property valuation can be said to be the assessment of the value of one's property. Yeah, people, people place value on their properties day in, day out. Uh, somebody will call you, I want to sell my property. The property is worth uh, two billion naira. You look at what he's talking about and it doesn't appear to be what anybody, any reasonable person will pay two billion naira for. So in, two, in uh, RIC, the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors, in 2006, they had this definition for valuation and they described valuation as a professional individual's opinion of the capital or rental price or value of a property on a defined basis. Because as professionals, a value of a property may be different depending on the user, depending on the purpose of the valuation. So valuation is also a detailed report of a property's market value. Because what we do as, uh, as valuers, estates of yours and valuers is really market value. It's different from the valuation of the quantity surveyors. It's different from the valuation of the market woman because we know when the market bonds, we hear that goods valued at so many billions have been lost. That is different from the kind of valuation we do. We do market valuation and probably some other valuation, but it's the value of a property on a defined basis. It can also be said to be the act of estimating the value of real estate by a person licensed to do so. We know in this country, when it comes to market valuation of real estate, it is only the estate surveyor and valuer registered by ESVABOR, licensed by ESVABOR, estate surveyors and valuer registration board that is licensed to carry out that estimation of value of real estate. So valuation can be for different purposes, depending on the use of the on the needs of the user. It may be for insurance, it may be for financial reporting, it may be for uh, probate, depending. So we estimate the value of real estate for different purposes as estate surveyors and valuers. Then let us remind ourselves about the valuation process. The essence of this is for us to really know where, where inspection comes in and the extent to which inspection should go. The valuation process, I have just about seven of them. The first is the instruction, you get a brief. We want to value this property. Instruction and terms of reference. The terms of reference means you need to understand the requirement of the clients. You need to have an interface with the client to really understand what they want to do, and also let them know the requirements you need, uh, access for inspection, title documents, and whatever you think is necessary. Then once you have understood that, you, the next is the adoption of the valuation basis and methodology before you move into the fields to do your valuation and market inspections. Valuation and market inspection simply means that you are not just inspecting just that asset, but you are looking at the environment, the competitors, the alternative uses, the everything that will guide you in coming up with the opinion, a professional opinion of value, because that is what differentiates us from every other person. Everybody is a valuer, but not everybody is a professional valuer. 
Then you return to your office, you do your data analysis, you then apply the valuation models, which we all know. We'll look at them briefly. Then you reconcile your value indicators and you do your valuation report. Uh, you may send in your interim report for the client's comments before you finalize and send in your draft final. They look, take a second look at it and then you send in the final report, which at the end, you would say you have completed the valuation assignment. So let's look briefly at the valuation approaches. There are three major approach, there are three approaches, or let's just say major approaches, because some, you can have a mix of, of the two, of two of them. So the market approach, the market approach provides an indication of value by comparing the assets with identical or comparable assets for which price information is available. All this I have written word for word as you have in the international valuation standards that is effective January of this year, January 2022. And we are encouraged to also look at it. Those of us that have not had the time to look at it, there are a few changes in there. So if you've read the last, uh, you have studied the last valuation standards, then you should create time to also take a look at the current one. Then the income approach provides an indication of value by converting future cash flow to a single current value. The cost approach, it provides an indication of value using the economic principle that a buyer will pay no more for an asset than the cost to obtain an asset of equal utility, whether by purchase or by construction, unless on due time, inconvenience, risk, or other factors are involved. Those are the three valuation approaches. Um, we have seen instances where people, without exploring the, uh, the market approach, which is the highest ranked, you know, without, uh, without exploring the approach fully, uh, they simply tell you uh, there is no data and data is available, but it may not be cheap. Data is available, it may not be cheap, but if we all can do a lot more using the market approach, then evaluations will be near perfect as a that variance between two values will be greatly reduced. Then the income approach, uh, you look at what income can come from that property over time and you convert it into a single current value as at today. Then the cost approach, you look at what is the cost of replacement of that property, but the, in doing that, you have to put on the cap of a buyer and not of a builder. It's not necessarily what it costs me to build, but rather what it will cost me to replace that asset. The utility, what it will cost to replace the utility of that, a, a, an asset of equal utility. So those are just to have, and if in looking at the three approaches, we would see that you can't run away from inspection. Inspection of the subject asset and inspection of probably the similar properties or the various properties in the market or, or even the alternative property that the person would have bought or would have built. So then the General standards of the IBS. They have just five of them. Scope of work, which we have mentioned in the, in the evaluation process. Investigations and compliance. The reporting, which is the end. The basis of value. Then the evaluation approaches and methods. 
this is just to remind us that the IVS, that whatever we require, we can find in the IVS. We just need to apply what we have in the IVS to peculiar situations. The IVS has provided for all that, even when you need to deviate from the standard, it is accepted to deviate, but you have to state in your report why you deviated. So inspection really comes under, inspections come under IVS 103, investigations and compliance. And I've uh, also replicated that as in the IVS. So it's not my original work. Um, chapter uh, 20, no, not chapter. Um, uh, what is it called now? I'll come to that. It's on investigations. So it says investigation made during the course of evaluation assignments must be appropriate for the purpose of the evaluation. So when you are going for inspection, when you are gathering your data or whatever, it must be appropriate to the purpose of the valuation you, you need, the valuation assignment. Then sufficient evidence must be assembled by means such as inspection, inquiry, computation, and analysis to ensure that the valuation is properly supported. Then it also states, limits may be agreed on the extent of the valuer's investigations. Any such limits must be noted in the scope of work. For, for instance, if you won't be given access to everywhere during your inspection, that has to be stated in your scope of work because it may affect your uh, judgment when it comes to providing your opinion of value. Then 20.4. Paragraph 20.4, yeah, that's the right word, paragraph of the IVS. When evaluation assignment requires information supplied by a party other than the valuer, consideration should be given as to whether, info, whether the information is credible or that the information may otherwise be relied upon without adversely affecting the credibility of the valuation. Yes, probably during inspection, there are certain places you are not able to get into and you rely on information from either the owner or his staff or somebody else that has to be noted. 20, paragraph 20.5, in considering the credibility and reliability of information provided. Valuers should consider matters such as the purpose of the valuation, that's A. B, the significance of the information of the valuation conclusion, the expertise of the source in relation to the subject matter, and D, whether the source is independent of either the subject asset and or the recipient of the valuation. That is clear to all of us. 20.6, the extent and limits on the investigations and any source of, so any sources of investigations that may be relied upon are part of the valuation assignment scope of work that will be communicated to all parties to the valuation assignments. Then 20.7, that paragraph 20.7, is the one that's uh, very interesting to me. And in fact, it's the reason I reproduce the entire, all these paragraphs, this, part, uh, this IVS 103. If, that 20.7, paragraph 20.7, if during the course of an assignment, it becomes clear that the investigations included in the scope of work will not result in a credible valuation or limitations on investigations are so substantial that the valuer cannot sufficiently evaluate the inputs and assumptions. The valuation assignment will not comply with the IVS. 
So if you are not doing a desktop valuation where you may not be required to carry out inspection, probably the first time that the asset is being valued and you have communicated to the client that you need access to be able to do a green book valuation, which is IVS standard valuation. If that is, you can, you are unable to have inspection, the kind of inspection you, you are determined to require to give you the necessary information, then the valuation assignment will not comply with the IVS. So you have to let the clients know that if you still go ahead without having inspection, in fact, you cannot go ahead. Uh, I've, had, I've had experience, and I've also heard that someone has also had that experience. Um, I remember a colleague, he was invited to by a contractor who wanted to do valuation. Incidentally, the contractor had also spoken with me, and I turned it down. The contractor wanted the valuation of certain machinery um, equipment, construction equipment, that we could not see that they are working on sites in different parts of the country. And he just wants to give us the uh, information and he expected us to do evaluation. I turned it down. And the good thing was that the other colleague too was invited and he also turned it down. So uh, I think we must commend, Mr. President, sir, I think we must commend the ethical practice of uh, some of your members. So inspection, um, what, what, what is inspection? Uh, it's, something we, it's something we see every day. We do, uh, somebody wants to sell a property, we do inspection. Somebody wants to rent a property, we do inspection. Uh, in the course of managing a property, we do inspection. Um, for in, fa in fact, in almost every area of our practice, we do, Inspection. So what is what actually is inspection? Inspection in the dictionary is simply defined as careful examination or scrutiny. So how careful is that should that explanation uh, should that examination be? How deep should that scrutiny be? That will be determined on what you are doing, whether it is agency. Uh, if some if somebody wants to wants to brief an agency of your valuer to sell a property. The kind of inspection he would do may not be as in-depth as if he has to value that same property, but we do valuations. So the report from an inspection is very vital to the successful completion of evaluation assignments. We all know that we, some of us have had the experience that uh, probably you inspected the property or you sent your colleagues in the office to inspect the property. And in the course of the valuation assignment, you discover that the information required to complete the assignment, the full information was not taken from during the inspection. So people have to go back to get the necessary information. So report from an inspection is very vital to the successful completion of evaluation assignments. And uh, valuation, it requires the highest level of competence in inspection. Uh, for those of us that are privileged to be members of the RICS, the RICS has come up with three levels of uh, competence. Uh, level one competence, which is knowledge and understanding uh, in an area. So if, if one is not really evaluation surveyor, one's, uh, one will just have a knowledge of an understanding of what inspection is, what valuation inspection is. Then the level two competence is application of knowledge and understanding, actually going out to carry out that valuation. That is, you know, to apply that knowledge and understanding of inspection. That is level two competence. But for you to be, an RICS registered valuer that is able to do red book valuation and 
in Nigeria, which we also um, assume that in Nigeria, somebody who wants to be doing green book valuation should also have that level three competence. And that level three competence is the ability to give reasoned advice and depth of technical knowledge on that is on inspection. So it is not just going to site to take measurements, to take uh, floor details, roof details, and all that. Uh, the uh, evaluation surveyor must be able to see beyond, beyond those. I, I, I remember, uh, I think it was a couple of years back, I, uh, I carried out evaluation of a property here in Abuja. And because of the shape of the, of the plots, the, it was already developed, although not completed. It was such that the driveway into the premises was narrow. The parking lots, the parking spaces for the rest occupants of the building on completion, it will be such that people will have to be knocking on their neighbor's doors to move the cars that will block the driveway when they want to drive in late at night or early in the, if they want to leave early in the morning. So that affected my opinion of value because every occupant in that building can't be independent. It's, so it, that property may be the same in terms of cost of replacement, but if I had not inspected myself, I wouldn't have noticed all those little details. So level three competence is about the ability to give reasoned advice and depth of technical knowledge when it comes to inspection for valuation. Then for inspection, the extent must have been communicated to the client and agreed. Um, depending on the need of the user, you may want to insist that you need to see certain places, you need to see certain things. You don't want to rely on the information of the client or of a third party. So that has to be agreed. And you as the valuer, you would know how to how best to handle such situations. So in inspection, uh, when, we, when, when, when you get a brief, you just, don't, uh, you just don't get a call. We want to do valuation and uh, from where you are, you just drive straight to the site. Yes, it may be possible in terms of uh, small properties, particularly in locations that you are very well aware of, and it may be bare land, who knows? Yeah, so, but ideally, in an ideal situation, there should be a plan to inspect. Um, and that plan, even depending on this magnitude of the valuation, assignment, before you drop that plan, it may be necessary to do a reconnaissance survey. So when you are planning for valuation, what are the things you look at? You look at the access, um, you look at the time, you look at the risk assessment and safety. For access, for, 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 for access, access in terms of having access into the property, access in terms of knowing when to go to the property, but you see, those things are things that guide us. I learned something over 20 years ago when I was in, when I was in practicing in Lagos uh, at Apapa. When you show an Indian or a Lebanese a property he wants to rent, he will tell you it will get back to you the next day after the inspection. And later I got to know that what one of the things they do is that they drive around the neighborhood at night to look at the security situation and to, to see certain things that may not have been seen at the time of inspection. Those of us that are also agency surveyors, we, we know that when you want to sell a property in a traffic prone neighborhood, you fix the time where the buyer would have a jolly smooth ride to the property. 
You see, when it comes to valuation, those are the little things that you also must take note of. Um, I recently, a, a bank I work for, they gave me, they instructed me to sell a property at Enugu. So I contacted some of our colleagues. I don't have to go to Enugu. I don't have an office in Enugu. What I just need to do is to partner with one of us in Enugu. I contacted the first person. He could not even go to the property. Up till now, he hasn't gone. He just, so I talked to another colleague that, ah, this person you introduced to me has not gone to the property to even advise on the sale price. My colleague told me that the traffic prone area, he won't have time to go. So, so access is a big thing when it comes to inspection and when it comes to valuation. Then time, when do you conduct your inspection? Um, do you conduct it to, so that your, for, for instance, you want to value an industrial premises. Yes, it's good to inspect when they are at work because that gives you a feeling of the environmental hazards that you also consider. So, so invariably, what I'm saying is valuation can ideally should be conducted over a period of time. Yes, your valuation is your valuation is like using a camera to take a picture, a still camera to take a picture of value. That's why we say start, uh, values remain static. But then for you to have a very clear picture, you have to have other considerations over a period of time. Because the some things may not be knowledgeable to you if that inspection is conducted at particular times of the day. Um, the risk assessment and safety. In this age, uh, we don't need to be told. In the era of kidnapping, in the era where, um, where an owner of a, a vendor of a property was murdered, um, I, I remember about a couple of years ago, or two years ago, a colleague of ours in Abuja, he was he, he escaped, you know, by uh, the whisk, uh, the skin of his teeth. He would have been he would have been murdered by this uh, this hoodlums, these bandits or whoever that called him for a negotiation on the property. So. We have to do a risk assessment. We have to be careful about our safety. It's, uh, it's important. Uh, probably, probably let people know where you are going to do your inspection. Don't go alone. And whatever you think you need to, you need to, how, you, how best you, you need to handle that situation is, is up to us. But it's something we must consider. Then the personnel, who should conduct inspection, we shouldn't conduct inspection in a big firm. Is it the low level staff? Is it the middle cadre staff? Uh, it depends on the valuation assignment at hand. But I would uh, say something about that maybe in the next slide or two. Then what tools are required? Ideally, we should get appropriate tools for, for valuation. So we'll also, uh, another slide, we'll look at, uh, at some tools that require for valuation. Then uh, one thing that is also very important is a uh, record. Uh, record taking and storage of the inspection uh, reports. So we need to plan for all that. That is, those are the things I noted that I think they are important. There may be one or two I've left out, uh, but the essence of this is that inspection needs to be properly planned. Uh, uh, pre uh, preparation prevents uh, poor performance uh, as, we've been, as we've been told. So, so personnel, uh, the, 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 so, sometimes we have to defend our profession. 
because all of every single one of us is an ambassador of this profession. But in all honesty, I we are all colleagues here. Um, but inspection, when it comes to valuation, is very important. So just sending, just thinking that valuation is just about taking measurements, taking pictures. I think we'll be doing a disservice to our profession because valuation is more than that. A buyer of a property would not just think about the inspection or the measurement and all that. It thinks beyond that. So when you conduct inspection, do you check if the taps are flowing, if water is flowing? If water is not flowing, what information were you given? You know, so it's it's a whole lot more than sending the junior staff. Um, so what personnel is required? Well, yeah, I have I have a pyramid. The the bottom slice, the bottom slice represents the junior staff whose function is largely routine assignments. So if we consider valuation to be routine, go and take measurement, take pictures, take this, take that, and they come back, we may not get the best from the inspection. The middle slice, the yellow middle slice, it represents the middle cadre staff. Their function is largely to supervise the junior staff. Uh, they have a little more experience than the junior staff and they can do a lot more than the junior staff. Then the top slice, it represents the senior staff whose function is strategy and management. I, 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 I think for, for serious, serious valuation inspection, and I think every valuation assignment should be considered as a serious inspection. I think the as a serious assignment for the uh, for the for the future of our profession, the inspection for valuation. I my proposal is to be con it should be conducted by middle or senior staff. Um, no, 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 nobody should be too big to visit a, the site of evaluation assignment, uh, even, if it's, even if it's to drive through the neighborhood, to see the street, to see the adjoining properties, to have a feel of the ambience of that, of that area. I, I think it is important for the senior level staff to, to do that. It will improve the integrity and delivery of our valuation reports. So the scope of valuation inspection, what, what actually do we go to look for during valuation, during inspection rather? Inspection should be detailed, but within the scope agreed with the client. Uh, that's, the, that's the essence of planning. Um, yes, you need access to certain places and all that. You must see certain properties and all that. Yes, it, it's it's important. It's important. But what are we actually going to? What are we actually going to see to inspect? I chose to look at it from the perspective of the characteristics, three characteristics of uh, properties that we know: the physical characteristics, the economic characteristics, and legal the legal issues. So the physical characteristics. Uh, description of the property, the slope, uh, um, uh, the size, the shape, uh, you know, th those, are, those, are, those are the physical, the construction, the condition, you know, they are the computer facilities available. These are physical characteristics. Uh, something like condition, yes, uh, a that, because that's one of the things why I propose that inspection should be carried out by at least the middle cadre officers. Something like condition, ambience, you know, uh, a junior level staff may not be able to appreciate uh, 
those physical attributes fully. Then we will also consider the economic factors because what, what we do is economics. That, that's what we do. So we look at the things that are the economic factors that are inherent to the property, internal to the property. We consider its place in the entire neighborhood, in the entire locality of the market. So we, those ones we cannot sit in our office to determine. You have to conduct an inspection to be able to appreciate all that. Then the legal issues, compliance with the planning uh, regulations, uh, the boundaries of the property, has it been encroached upon? Uh, because one of the things in your scope of work, uh, after getting the briefs, you know, one of the things you will have demanded will have been the, the title deed plan. That's what we call it in Abuja. In Lagos, we probably call it a survey plan. And in most uh, cities of Nigeria, we call it survey plan or TDP, that we call it in Abuja. So you would have had an idea of the boundaries. So on getting there, you can actually know whether uh, there has been encroachment or whether uh, it, is, it is different from what you have in your title. So those legal issues are, are also very, very important. About uh, uh, two or three years ago, I was involved in the evaluation of uh, a, a, an, a, an organization, you know, nationwide, and and I remember in Kano, the the land area that was that, that was gotten from sites from the inspection was far smaller than what was in the title document were were availed. And another thing I must say uh, that, that in in planning. In, in this in this era, there is a lot you can do from your office using the Google app, the Google Maps, you know, to look at the uh, the boundaries and all that. Then another legal issue is occupation. Is it is it uh, uh, is it tenanted? Is it occupied? What's the status of the occupier and all that? Because all those things will affect your opinion of value. Then we need we need to understand the factors that drive value. Uh, if you don't inspect, you may not you you may not uh, have that have that feel of 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 uh, of what drives value. Uh, the, the 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 property, uh, for instance, if it's uh, a commercial property now, uh, one may need to go and make a on a dual carriageway. For instance, I remember when I was in Lagos. Okay, yeah, that, I think that's a good example. While I was in Lagos, the at uh, mile two from mile two, though uh, on Upper Porch to the expressway, the um, what's it called? The warehouses on the right, you know, coming from Apapa, were a lot more expensive than those across the road at Amu Wardofi. The, 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 the simple reason is that for you to, when you are coming from the port, for you to drive into the warehouse at Amu Wardofi, you need to go and turn many kilometers away. So if, if one doesn't expect, one wouldn't know. And then also the cadre, the level, of the person inspecting. That's why I proposed that only middle cadre and the senior people should carry out inspection. Because they, they, they are the ones that will be able to understand the interplay of these various aspects, the physical characteristics, the economic factors, and the legal issues. The, the interplay of those factors uh, and, the, and the factors that drive value. For, for, for instance, when it comes to value, uh, value residential building, you'll be talking of street appeal. Uh, when it comes to valuation of uh, motor vehicles, you'll be talking of the options 
in 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 the vehicle. When it comes to a recreation property like a hotel, uh, I, I I see I see people advertise hotel, uh, hundred rooms hotel, uh, sixty rooms hotel. A hundred rooms hotel does not make it more valuable than a hotel with thirty rooms, for instance. It's not necessarily the location. Uh, but the profit centers, because when it comes to hotel valuation, the it, it's about what income it can generate. So one needs to have that eye to identify the profit centers in a recreation facility. Also, when it comes to commercial a property, you'll be talking of the functional spaces. Um, a, a lot of times we need to have that eye, uh, that business eye, uh, like when you talk of the car parking. Um, a lot of, uh, a, some, some, some traders, what they do, uh, I know a particular complex, a plaza here in Abuja, where about uh, four of our colleagues used to be, they used to have offices there. Uh, there was this trader who rented a small, a small office, a small space to sell his uh, goods. But then the car park, he had a truck, more like a container, where he was also, he was storing his things and he was not paying any extra for that. So even those of us that know the NISV Secretary at Basan Plaza, if you get there, you will see two big trucks you know, like contain with 40 foot containers that is permanently packed in front there. It's one of the occupants that uses that as storage. I don't think they pay any extra because they will just drive and uh, that they are packing. You see, so, so those are the little things we need to be able to, to identify and we can only identify them when we have a detailed inspection. Another thing, when it comes to commercial spaces, is the headroom, uh, even if the staircase, if it's, uh, there's an adjoining staircase and the staircase is very wide, um, you will see that that staircase will also be used as display areas and storage. Those of us that know pack and shop at Abuja, at Wuse to Abuja, can attest to that. So inspection is something that will make us see all that. If one just, in, in carrying out valuation, if one just says the letable space, just goes there to measure letable space. If things like pack and shop, for instance, just measure letable space, and you say the staircase is not, is a, uh, ancillary space is for circulation, circulation space. And you don't make an adjustment for that because that is what any rational trader of that space in that, that uh, occupier of that building will do. So, but the point I'm trying to make is that when we are doing inspection, we should look at all those, all those details. Petrol station, for instance, uh, the, 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 the value of a petrol station is in how many, how many liters it is able to sell in a day. I remember when I was involved in the valuation of a petrol station, a, of a particular petrol station in Abuja. Yeah, they said data may not be available, but I was able to get the highest selling petrol station in Abuja and how many liters they sell in a day. Um, I thought it it was that uh, corner opposite NMTC, but rather because they had many more pumps to dispense. But from the authorities, I was able to get that the petrol station opposite Hilton with fewer pumps is the one that sells the most in Abuja. So just looking at uh, just using costs to value the petrol station, I would have shortchanged the, uh, I wouldn't have come up with a fair 
opinion of value if I had used cost methods for the valuation of that particular petrol station? Well, because I was able to get information uh, from other petrol stations. So, but but all those things they can uh, they 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 are important. Uh, a petrol station may be selling. Uh, you see a queue there, but the pumps are inefficient. So, in in inspecting a petrol station, for instance, one of the things I will also look at: how many liters do they do their pump do their pumps dispense in a minute? You know. So those are. But inspection is very important, and the one needs to look at everything. Everything when one is carrying out evaluation inspection. So what are, what are the tools that are required for inspection? Um, first, I would say a checklist. Um, uh, we, we've been told that a lot of drivers have died having accidents on roads that they are very familiar with. They run into stationary vehicles that are parked on that road. And it is true. So I think it is important to have a checklist so that you don't forget anything. Yeah, you may have been doing this for 20 years, five years, one year, three years. Uh, but when, when it becomes routine, you may lose out on some salient points. So it is important to have a checklist. Then it is also important to have the appropriate material to take notes and observations. Yes. Uh, yeah, some people prefer to write long hands. Some prefer to uh, just scribble onto their tabs or their phones. But it is important to have the appropriate material to take notes and do what works for you. Then in this age, uh, it went, especially when it is about uh, something that is land-based, unlike motor vehicles, you will need uh, a GPS. And, and for me, and I think that was also what the board approved, uh, the GPS, the datum on the GPS, I use WGS84, which is the datum for Google Earth. So I'm able to go back to the office and I'm able to do some further inspections on Google app. You know, you can move the dates backwards to see what that place used to be two years ago, three years ago, 10 years ago. You know, these things are possible in this state. So GPS is important as an inspection tool. Then you also need camera, uh, still camera to take pictures. Um, and and also um, sometimes we are necessary a video camera. Then you need the uh, the appropriate measuring device for the exercise. Uh, there are different measuring devices. Uh, we have the measuring tapes. There are, there are different types that will give you uh, different percentages of error. So that should be noted. You have the laser. Uh, measuring device, we have the sonar measuring device, we have the uh, measuring wheel, uh, even, even the satellite images of Google can also be a measuring device in this age, you know. So get the appropriate measuring device for the exercise. Then we cannot overemphasize safety. Um, it's also a tool, there are also tools that are necessary for inspection. You have the safety helmets, helmet, the safety gloves, safety boots, and the appropriate clothes. Um, you don't wear a flowing Agbada into a factory. Uh, because if your Agbada or your flowing gown, you know, gets in there, although the owners of the factory may not, should not even allow you in with, if you are not appropriate, appropriately dressed. But we have to have that on our own as uh, professional valuers. Then beyond those physical, <coughs> excuse me. Beyond those physical tools, it is also important to have a business and commercial mindset. Uh, 
and and an eye for details. Why I mentioned those, those the two of them as tools is, is is this. There there are, there are certain things that we we may miss. Um, we know we know one of the billionaires in this country who is adept at stripping stripping assets. Uh, if we don't have that business or commercial mindset while doing the valuation, we may have played down on certain things that are important to a businessman, and we may not have returned a fair opinion of value. The same thing about eye for detail. Yeah, there are, there are certain gaps that may be that may be certain certain possibilities that just looking at the physical characteristic of a property, just taking measurement, one may not identify those things. So that's why I wanted, I want to emphasize on them as tools for inspection because they are, they are very important. Then inspection reports. Inspection reports should be detailed. Uh, they, should be, they should be functional. Um, uh, functional in the sense that what is the purpose of your valuation and what details are you taking from your inspection? So those things must be in your uh, inspection report. And your inspection report should be able to be interpreted by, by any person, any, any person in the office. Uh, a, I, I was involved in the evaluation for compensation on a route some few years ago. And one of the uh, persons I brought in to work with me, uh, you know, it would just uh, put a triangle, a, a rectangle rather, and call it a mosque. Uh, it was when we got to the office, looking at the picture, what. Uh, because it was in the northern part of the country, you know, what it was calling a mosque was where uh, this created it. This is not up to three square meters. They just created it, you know, to enable the trader just to pray. And that was what he called a mosque. If, if pictures were not available, it would have been interpreted to, to mean so, something else. So the inspection report should be useful, it should be functional, it should be, it, another person should be able to interpret it clearly, Unambi uh, it should be unambiguous. Then it should be stored in a retrievable format that from time to time, uh, if there's an issue, um, you should be able to retrieve the valuation inspection report, you know, to justify how you came about your opinion of value. Then information sourced from third parties must be indicated as such in the inspection report. Um, you inspected a property and it's uh, a security man or even a neighbor that just told you certain things. You know, those things should all be noted as information from third parties. Then we should also remember that we need to, uh, we should make factual disclosures without uh, breaching confidential information of the, of the client in those, in those reports. Uh, we should have that, we should, we should strive to have that balance. Yeah, so in conclusion, I would just say that inspection is a key determinant in the successful delivery of evaluation assignment, it isn't something we should uh, joke with. It's, uh, uh, it's something that is most important, just like uh, the uh, basis or approach of valuation is important. Every step in that valuation uh, process is important. They are all very important. So inspection should be purpose-driven and detailed. 
It should be conducted professionally and efficiently. Be, uh, uh, yeah, professionally and efficiently. Efficiently because uh, we, are, we, are, we are running business and every, every time we spend on sites can be used for uh, alternative use. Uh, so we shouldn't waste time there, but at the same time, we should get all the necessary information that is required to deliver a successful valuation uh, report. It will be inefficient if one goes to a site to inspect two or three times because one keeps forgetting one or two things, you know. So that is what I meant by it should be conducted professionally and efficiently. And uh, whatever we say, we cannot overemphasize the place of ethics because that is the bedrock of every professional service. And that is what will sustain our practice. So whether our practice will go into extinction or it will remain alive, it's in our hands and it is our ethical practice that will determine that. So we must consider ethics at all times, before, during, and after valuation inspection. Um, I, 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 I think it was last year, I valued a property for a client and were informed that we should not take pictures because of the nature of the residents of that uh, property. And later, maybe some months down the line, I saw somebody, a colleague who worked for another firm, uh, but we did not do it at the same time. I just saw on Facebook that he was inspecting that property. Um, yes, he thought he was doing advocacy for the valuation profession, which is perfect, which is good, but that has to be done in an, uh, in, uh, it, we, we, we need, it, it should be done ethically. So we should not uh, breach the privacy of our clients because of information we get uh, during, uh, before or after inspection. Uh, we should at all times respect the confidential information of the client as this is important to ethical and professional practice. So, Thank you very much for the audience. I'm very, I'm very grateful for the time. Thank you so much. All right, thank you very much, sir. That was very, very um, informative. Okay, I'd like to say this to our participants, please. If you look at your Zoom webinar app, there's a section for Q and A. So I know that a lot of you have questions that you want to ask. So please, I'd like you to send your questions to that part of the Zoom app and our speaker will answer that uh, question. But um, like I mentioned, we have in our midst, I mean, His Excellency, the president of this institution. So we would like to hear from him in the person of ESV, Sir Chief Emmanuel Ocas, Wiki, the president of our institution. We'd just like to hear from him. So Sir, we'd like to hear from you, please, Sir. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you very much, uh, the moderator and the uh, let me also uh, congratulate the speaker, uh, Ni, for a very good job he has done. Let me recognize the first vice president who is on this platform, the second vice president, and not vocalist. Um, good morning. I deliberately decided to attend this webinar because I want to learn. Um, for some of us who have been in practice for over 20, 30 years, you, you, you observe that a lot of things are beginning to change. And if you don't learn and relearn, there's every tendency that you'll be, you be a cake. You, don't, you wouldn't know what is happening. So I, I just felt that it is time for me to learn. So I want to thank me for, for going through the rudiment of uh, inspection. I, again, will say that it's a good thing that we're having people who are attending this kind of training. We have over 210 as at now, uh, which shows that uh, we are ready to take the institution and the profession to a higher level. 
Let me also say that for you to be an estate surveyor and valuer, you need to be a member of Nigerian Institute of Estate Surveyors and Valuers. You need to be a member of the Nigerian Institute of Estate Surveyors and Valuers. It's through that vehicle that you get to the Estate Surveyors and Valuer Registration Board of Nigeria. Yeah, for now, I don't know if the board will uh, open another window for people to be registered as Estate but as of today, the only vehicle you have that can take you to be registered as an estate of your valuer. Number two, let me also say that I'm very grateful that it's during this past year that we have a lot of people that are willing to train and we train, both at the branch level, at the um, at the professional uh, level, and also at other issues that will affect the institution and the profession. You see people who are not getting interested in what is going on at the, at the institution and at the professional level. That gives me joy and happiness that it is no longer business as usual. For anybody who wants to be an estate surveyor and valuer, you just don't wake up one morning and say they want to go and do that. Or after studying in school, you now find that you have gotten to the level you want to get uh, you, you just want to relax. No, our profession is a dynamic one. And since it's a dynamic one, which means you have to follow what is going on globally. And I'm happy that uh, Neil took us all this round because these people may look at it as it is uh, as very elementary, but I can tell you that if your inspection, which is the first stage of carrying out valuation, for those of us uh, that are uh, into valuation, for those of us that are in agency uh, um, surveyor, we also know that you need inspection. Even those of us that are doing facility and property management, you also need inspection. So as an essay surveyor and valuer, you need what the presenter has given us today to build up as an essay surveyor and valuer in Nigeria. And I want to comment him because he went to the rudiment and tried as much as possible to even update some of the things that we are not taught in the university and some of the things that some of us did not even experience when we are carrying out our foundation because of the, the dynamic nature of our profession. Then finally, I want to say that it's a good thing that we try as much as possible to participate in the institutional activities. What we have learned this, this morning will go a long way to affect our practice. For those of us that are on this platform, on this webinar today, you will, you will agree with me that in whatever way you are, is it, are you of the, of the uh, old uh, surveyors or the new ones that are coming up, you find out that you have learned one or two things. I never knew that you'll be, uh, you'll be professionally and business-minded before you go for inspection. I, I, I didn't know that you have to put all these things in, into consideration when you are even doing your inspection. So it's a good thing that we have learned. But, I want to ask one question. Now, me talked about the Google Map and Google X, which is which are new uh, system of inspection or uh, other apps that have that uh, professionals have developed for us to enhance our accuracy in in inspection. Now, does this replace our physical inspection? If I if I have a property, I want to market in Mena. Or I have a property I want to sell in Abuja. Um, I know I'm in Portacourt. Do I really use the Google map to identify, having identified the property I want to market? Is that enough for me to put that market in the, to put that, sorry, to put that property in the market? Having used the Google map or Google Earth to identify that this is where the property is. Does, does this application actually replace physical inspection? That is my question. And finally, I want to congratulate all those of us that have participated in this, in this uh, webinar and to say that we are, we are very ready to assist our members in our own little way to ensure that we get our people ready to practice the profession. Because uh, one of the ways for us to make ourselves relevant is the kind of service we render to our clients. If you, if you, if you give your, your clients a credible uh, um, service that when a non-estate of your valuer 
do the same thing, he will see the difference. There are several tendencies that he's looking for an essence of years and value us. And that is one of the ways we can actually reduce quality in our profession. Is for us to give out credible services, and reliable professional services to our clients. So I want to thank the organizers of this webinar. I want to thank Essence of Yam Valua Ni Fadoji for his presentation. And I'm very, very grateful. I have learned a lot this morning. I, I wish you uh, further good deliberation. Thank you. But I want you to answer my question. All right. Thank you very much, sir. So, sir, Mr. Mr. Ni, sir, I'd like you to please answer the question of the president, please. Thank you. Well, uh, uh, thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Mr. President. I, I, I wouldn't know if you if uh, the president asked a question or he gave uh, a directive. No, I didn't give uh, directive. I only asked a question. You know, you are you are the teacher now, so we have to obey you. I'm 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 I'm, I'm on this webinar as a, as a participant, even though I'm the president. But I want to learn. Oh, 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 oh okay, sir. Um, for, for me, the way, what the way I consider technology is this is uh, a machine. Technology is a machine. And I remember O-level physics uh, when I was in secondary school, machine is something, something that makes your work easier. So uh, you mentioned Google Earth and Google Map. I, I, I will tell you honestly, as I'm in Abuja here, with the good road network, I still use Google Map. Why? It gives me the distance, which uh, driving down to uh, a place, I may not be able to determine, but I can say between this place and that place is about uh, five minutes drive, 10 minutes drive. That we used to do by mere estimation or driving directly, driving uh, physically to determine that. But now you can get that drive time through Google app. Then the, uh, through Google map. Then Google app is another useful tool. You can get the size of a place. And um, it, it, if, if you, but you must be adept at its use, particularly when the area is vast. I tell you, I can beat my chest to it. I can use it more. I'll be more accurate than somebody who uses a tape to take the measurement of a site in determining size. I'll be more accurate than somebody. If I use Google Earth, I will come up with something very close to what you have in the survey plan than if somebody use, uses a tape. So it is not an alternative, but it is a machine. But we need to be adept at its use. So, so that's my answer, sir. Does that do, uh, is, is yeah. that the answer, sir? Yes, because you okay. said it's not. Thank you, no alternative. It's not an alternative to physical inspection, and and I think that is uh, that is the correct thing. I'm happy that uh, you answered me. Thank you very much. Let me allow others so that they can contribute for. They can also ask their question and can make their contribution, but I'm still here. Okay, sir. All right, thank you very much, sir. All right, so I would just like to, one of our panelists, I'd like to, Dr. Olajo, I'd like you to please just give your input on the presentation so far, please, sir. Five minutes, please. Thank you, sir. Dr. Olajo, can you hear me, sir? You have the floor, sir. Thank you. Dr. Ladoku, can you hear us, sir? Okay, well, while we're waiting, I think he has a little problem with his audio. So I'd like to give 
the privilege to our Excellency, second vice president of uh, the profession, uh, ESB Victor Lunga, to share his thoughts on the presentation, sir. Thank you. Uh, hello. Go ahead, sir. I can hear you clearly, sir. Yes, good morning, noble colleagues. Uh, Mr. President, um, the guest speaker or the lecturer, the organizers of the program. I don't like know to, if I get connected, but okay. I'd like to um, show my uh, at um what we are doing today. And I want to say how proud I am to be um, part of the program as a sponsor. And I think the content of this presentation and the number of participants actually show how this, uh, this particular assignment, I mean, um, program has gone to achieve the objective. Um, I want to particularly congratulate uh, Estee Survey and Valois uh, Lake Abodern for his vision and um, doggedness in seeing to the um, um, educational content of our practice. Uh, I think this is something like the president said, this is um, something that we should encourage because uh, the only way to remain competitive in this day and age, in an age of technology, which um, uh, the guest speaker has told us uh, is essentially to make things easier for us. The only way to remain competitive and relevant is to continue to learn because um, even our clients have access to the same sources of information that we also have access to. They have access to internet, they have access to Google Earth, Google Map, they have access to virtually, you know, as long even uh, subs, uh, subscription based um, uh, platform, as long as they can pay. So the difference, therefore, that we can only make is in our interpretation, processing and interpretation and application of those information. And in order to make the best of that, we need to ensure that we are properly, you know, we, we continue to train and retrain. Some very simple information, very simple um, knowledge that we think, oh, we're above, like inspection. Um, the foundation of the profession, you know, <laughs> is actually on those simple, very simple, you know, um, stuff so i want to i want to congratulate all of us and i want to say that this is the way to go and again there's something i want to share i want to also encourage us to remember no matter how knowledgeable we are um, there is one thing we need to always focus on to remember and that is ethics. The moment we, we relegate ethics to the background, all our knowledge, all our you know, brilliance and whatever becomes useless. And the greatest challenge that we face, apart from you know, this challenge of training in our profession today is our capacity to actually behave ethically in all ramifications. 
And I'm saying this, you know, um, because um, we need we need to put ethics at the forefront of what we do, whether it's valuation, whether it's agency, whether it's management, ethics is absolutely important. And what compromises our ethical behavior is, you know, um, money. You know, what we, we think we can do fast, you know, cut corners and so on and so forth. So, noble colleagues, this is absolutely thrilling and I'm very, very happy to be part of this. And I must commend the guest speaker. I, to be honest with you, I wasn't expecting anything less from me if I don't do. And I think he has actually lived up to my expectation. Uh, the way he uh, went through uh, the nitty gritty of this basic, you know, uh, topic, um, you know, going to the bare bone and perhaps even providing us with a roadmap to actually uh, getting this done. I think I must commend you and I thank you very much. Well, to be honest with you, we couldn't expect anything less. You are a member of the board and uh, as a regulator, you are supposed to be above some of us that you are regulating. So I thank you very much for that uh, brilliant uh, uh, delivery. So noble colleague, Mr. President, I once again like to express my um, my you know delight at being uh, as uh, being part of this uh, presentation, and I wish the organizers many more um, successful programs like this. Posterity will judge you what you are doing for this for the profession. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. It's a pleasure. All right. So, Dr. Laduko, are you ready, sir? So, we'd like to hear your input, sir. Thank you. Sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I want to thank the, thank the organizers of this program and my very wonderful brother, ESB, uh, who has done so much justice to. Uh, the topic so well. Honestly, I'm impressed. So I only just want to add to the fact that inspection underscores everything we do in estate management. And uh, just as the second vice president has said, if you want to continue to be relevant in this profession, we must get it right to so the art. It's an art that has to be learned, embraced, and that we must have to uh, consciously develop among members. Otherwise, will not be relevant in the scheme of things. Why do I say that? Because this is a global era and nothing is eating anything now. Any inspection done or any evaluation done. So with a premise of a faulty uh, inspections, so it's questionable. And of course, since uh, foreign investors and others are also allowed to practice valuation or to conduct the same thing that we do all over the world. So it becomes easy for anybody to fault whatever we have done. And that is why this art is so important and is so important. Then I also want to emphasize the fact that inspections, even though the deployment of uh, uh, tools have helped us now to be able to capture information, but at the same time, we must be weary of carrying out inspections or to do valuations where we don't have physical inspections because in some instances there are, there are some hidden aspects that might put a question mark onto the integrity of whatever we have done and that is why in doing that please i will encourage that so care has to be exercised where we don't have especially internet inspections because that will also it will always put a question mark on the integrity of the, of the professional. So that's so important. But getting inspection right, the details and every other thing, help us, especially when you have to employ methods like he has said. So methods like the income approach. So where you have to be able to prove the profitability. We are decisions that will have to be made is dependent on the ability of the operator. So to be able to, generate income. So from which he will have to set aside an aspect of his for, I mean, as renters. 
So this is so important. And that is why, like he has said, I want to support the fact that this is an art that will be well developed and that we should make conscious efforts to develop the younger ones so that they can be able to do this one. So thank you very much. So yes, I really commend all, all your inputs. And I also thank the organizers for this uh, very wonderful opportunity to contribute. Thank you all, my president and all the very senior and wonderful uh, colleagues. Thank you all. God bless you all. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Ladoko. Okay. Uh, Dr. You, Santina Bato, you have the floor, sir, for your inputs. Thank you. Dr. Samson Abato, can you hear us? Sir? It looks like we have any issues. Okay, while we're waiting for Dr. Samson Abato, I'd like uh, to invite the Director of Studies of Business Academy, the President of the uh, ESB, Olalu Kabo, there, to share his input on the presentation. Okay, thanks so much. I don't know if I'm audible. Can you hear me, please? It's yes, very audible. We can hear you clearly, sir. We can hear you. It's OK. Thank you so much. Uh, in the first instance, I want to appreciate all our participants for giving us time to attend this program. This is not the time for post talk of time. But I equally want to appreciate my president. It's a great honor to have the life of my president attending this program. We are highly honored. And we are equally highly motivated by his speech. And uh, our second vice president, who had always been with us, we only sent proposal to him and he graciously agreed to be a sponsor. I need to, I mean, to sponsor this program. It's a master class. And uh, we have six, six of these in series because we want to ensure that we bridge the gap between the, the practice and the academy. We want to ensure that what we learn is what we practice. We want to ensure that there is, there is best practice in what we do in the name of foundation. So we appreciate uh, our second vice for being uh, a, the sponsor of this program here as we speak to Alunga. We are equally expecting others. We have sent proposals to quite a lot of people. I know we didn't send to our president because we know his hands are full. But uh, well, the door is open to my president. So we have a lot of master classes awaiting. But by way of contributing to what has been said, I want to look at it from two perspectives. The first one is to buttress uh, what uh, my ever respected Niji Fadudu has said, as emphasizing the details of inspection and the need for a senior uh, level officer to handle it. How do, let's look at the following, please. In conducting inspection, you can have property that is already restored, but suffer from what we call constructional defects or constructional failure. Like for example, maybe dampness, rising dampness. No, no level of might not be able to see this. I've experienced a case of a transaction in PGC. Shortly after the property was bought, a fantastically built five bedroom detached house. Shortly after it was bought, it had to be demolished. Why? because of severe dampness. So that dampness, if as a value, we just value a property for purchase to, uh, on behalf of a buyer, and you value it so much because of the beauty, the edifice, without really looking at the effect of constructional defects, what it will have and the impact that it can have on value, right? Then we might be guilty of negligence, actually, if the law will have to take its course. Just like in abroad, where you have to, you know, be careful about uh, land contaminations and the like, like that, it's important for us to pay attention to all these details, which we equally know. That's the relevance of our construction uh, knowledge, anyway. Because a property that the, the the internal floor is lower than the premises will definitely be prone to dampness. We should know that, and that we can observe when we go for inspection. And if the external premises is equally lower than the road, well, that's another flood uh, prone area. So then again, under that too, there can be design failure. 
You can have design failure or design defects, which will introduce obsolescence in the property. And that will definitely affect the marketability of it. And if what we have to determine is the point of equilibrium in the market, then we should be able to interpret the impact of such on marketability and what that will be on value. Equally, is what I call the lack like of functional obsolescence. Functional obsolescence, like you have, uh, like what, what uh, Nivado you mentioned about uh, his judgment, but after he has inserted a property, and he, he sees that there will be inconveniences for uh, the occupants. So uh, that ordinarily will mean that the property is not really all that functional. That there are a lot of you know indicators of functional obsolescence, and this will only be known by middle cadre or high level officer, senior officer uh, in our profession. So. Uh, on this account, I want to advise that uh, we pay attention to all this. Equally, there could be, for example, you will co we collect uh, comparables, analyze our grid of comparables. Do we really go into details like you want to value land? One is of constraint, maybe it's slope down, down uh, backward. The other, uh, you, you have other comparables that are relatively buildable. Then how will buildability affect the, the, your analysis concerning the one you want to value? These are what I, <coughs> excuse me, I want to add then, before I leave uh, that presentation, if we want to talk about condition, you know, under physical characteristics, condition, and the issue of ambience. You see, ambience will go a long way to contribute to, um, you know, to desire for the property. But equally, we should pay attention to embellishment. Embellishment, if it is unnecessary, we should know it will not add value, except in some cases, in, in terms of uh, maybe if you are talking of a gallery, you are talking of advertising property and so on and so forth. These are knowledge that, you know, uh, as professional, we can really interpret the implications of all these when we see them in expression uh, uh, on our value. Now, the other aspect I want to add to this presentation is the aspect of abstract inspection. Abstract inspection, let me just create, let me give you a real life a, a, a scenario. We were to buy a property at uh, Muritara Mohammed in Lagos here, yeah? and that property had been valued to what 120 million. I'm talking about about 10 years ago. Been valued to what 120 million because in that axis, actually, it's, 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 that's the region of value, right? But fortunately, my, I, I, I represented my client to buy. And uh, on critical inspection, after the physical and what have you, we, are, we now have to study the title. And we realize that that property has just 17 years to go. Just 17 years. The adjoining one happened to be freehold, which was built by my clients. They became a special purchaser in that case because they wanted to buy adjoining land uh, for car park. <coughs> Excuse me. So it has 17 years. And this property has been valued as if it's a freehold. Then we have to enter into another round of negotiation. Yes, you can surrender for an extension of time and renew. But of what implication is that in terms of cost? So the, the type of interest tied to such is very, very important. The cost what we value is not just the physical land, is the PLU, proprietary land unit. Of course, if there is no like, okay, another example from my own experience, we, value, we happen to be part of a, a consortium for a, a property investment company, very big company, and we value the property about 21 floors among all other ones that were given to us. That property, then the assignment was for insurance. It was about 3 point something billion insurance value. Before we concluded, they said, sorry, we, that we should, the team should give them uh, uh, more, um, market value. Then we had to ask for title. Let's verify. It's very, very alarming to realize that as at that time, three years before that time, their, their tenure had lapsed. And I graciously tell them that, well, given the fact that you, your interest, you don't have subsisting interest, your market value is approximately zero. And that led them to, and we gave advice, that led them to now have, uh, have got to go and negotiate to buy the residue of the, on, of the, of the grantor. Today, they are the owner in terms of, uh, for the fact that they have bought the residue. So it's important for us to ascertain the title, because if we do not ascertain the title, we might be misplacing uh, value. If a, a property has 
70, 80 years on expired, we cannot compare that value with a property that has 20, 17 years or 17 years on expired term. Now, and the process of reflecting the unexpired term in our valuation is very, very clear. Irrespective of the method of valuation you want to use. This, I think, in our future uh, webinar, we have a section for that. And I, I, we, we are sure we'll get a uh, value that will do justice to this. So with the details of our physical inspection, property, proprietary land unit has two elements, two composites. That is the physical entity and the abstract, the corporeal and the incorporeal. We must establish the type of interest, the unexpired term of the interest, so that we will not be valuing a, 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 a wasting asset that is clearly a wasting asset as a, a well-secured asset like a pre-code in, interest. Now, with this in mind, it then means that when we are considering after our details of physical inspection, then we need to do our abstract inspection. And that is about title. It's not equally out of tone to carry out title search. All this comes under what, uh, um, I need if I do refer to as legal factors or legal elements of the property. We probably need to consider uh, the state of the title itself. I give you an example. As a junior surveyor, then we were to value a property for mortgage. And the man said, hey, it's just for you to revalue. He didn't use it that time. It was ah, okay, but we need to search. If he was unable to give us the original title, so we got a, a, a photocopy. And we conducted our search only to realize that there is a subsisting legal mortgage on that property. Yes, you won't have access to the value of the loan, but you have access to the fact that there is a first mortgage on it. Then you saw that that discussion becomes necessary. It's not left for the user of our report to find out the details of what that first mortgage is. But it will not be right to ignore such implications under the name or the disguise or the excuse that we, we do not see the title. If you are valuing for insurance, you can lay claim that you do not see the title. Fine, because title might be of no consequence why, when it is for insurance. But when it is for mortgage, for example, or when it is for sale, how do you make it? How do you justify? You have valued a property that has 25 years on the expired term as if it's a free old interest, particularly because uh, it's logical that when it is uh, about 60 years and above, you value you, you can value in, in perpetuity. And calculation has shown that, you know. So uh, you have valued it in that same way as if it has 60, 70, 80 years to go, only for your buyer to pay. After paying, maybe now you want to seek uh, a real estate partners in the, in, in, in invest in, in, in the that investment and to realize that just about 25 years to go. And that, well, it shouldn't have worth even up to 50% of what they have paid. So the emphasis here is that let's pay attention to our abstract inspection. That was actually captured under legal characteristics that uh, Mr. Nehifadudu mentioned. The only thing is I'm trying to emphasize the aspect of the in type of interest. And um, in fact, even on that type of interest, you know, we have categories of interest. You can have co-ownership and co-ownership has implications. So that, that, that is not for today's discussion anyway. When we get to that section in our master classes, we'll be discussing that. I'm sure we will get a, a specialist to, to handle that for us. So on this note, I think uh, uh, these are, uh, so that I won't jump into questions because I've seen some questions there. I think when we get to questions, the one that is for Reese Academy will be answered. I want to sincerely appreciate uh, yes, we need if I do, do, even with the short notice, you are done wonderfully well. Well, we don't expect anything less. Uh, so that is just the fact. I always call it calling my boss, my senior, my you know, and uh, he has equally demonstrated that. So thank you so much uh, for for this presentation. Uh, over to you, the moderator. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Doctor Abato, are you are you ready for us? Sir? Can you hear us? So we can have your your input, sir. Before we go into the question and answer session. Doctor Abato, can you hear us, sir? Okay, I think we are having a little problem with uh, with audio. Anyways, so we'll go straight to the 
question and answer session. I have quite a number of questions here. Yes, we a lot. Fadoju, me, Fadoju. Sorry about that. We would like you to answer some of these questions. So the first question says, we have been talking about interim report to a client, but critically considering it, is it necessary as you're expected to give informed opinion without sentiment? So that's the question, sir. Uh, okay, 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 thank you. I, I, I can see the questions in the question and answer session. Um, okay. Yes, uh, some, of, some of them are really outside the scope of this um, system, but but well, we'll just try to take as many as we can take because I'm also looking at the time. Um, yeah, is an interim report to a client necessary? I will say yes. Um, standard valuation practice. Uh, you, you see, your valuation report is for a client. So it is better to do business with clients that uh, that really know what they want. The essence of the interim report is for the client to confirm that what you are doing, that your, that your report will be functional. Your, your valuation has to give utility to the client. So that's, that is it. it. It is standard practice to have a, an interim report before your draft final, before your final report. But we also know that there are some uh small valuations that uh, probably are also thinking because it's business how do i send a draft report and this but i think uh i saw the the question was about okay the the question is really about not changing your opinion yeah sending a valuation report doesn't a, an interim report doesn't mean you can be influenced it's just for you to be able to explain how and why you have read that opinion of value. So it is standard practice. There is uh, there's a next question about uh, uh, how does title of a property affect the value of properties? Uh, I yeah. think um, uh, the executive director of Rails Academy has just answered that. Okay. Uh, he has just he has just he has just answered that. So we should not. Uh, waste time on that. The okay. next one is about, uh, I, I think it's how, how do professional values get relevant in value appropriation for digital assets uh, instruments for, okay, okay. Um, in, in this part of the world, it's something that we, we, have, to be, we have to be careful about. Um, I, I remember, what was his name? The first uh, MD of Amcon, he, 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 he tweeted that if you don't know how uh, this uh, crypto, uh, these coins, bitcoins is mined, <laughs> you have to be careful about going, going into it. So digital asset instruments, yes, it's something we need to study and for me, anything you are not very well versed in, don't put your money into it. So it will take some time. We are still we are still learning about that. Then this question for Ezra Bond, is it the body considering statutory licensing or such? Is the body well? Uh, I may not be able to. I'm a member of Ezra Bond, but I don't think it is appropriate for me to. To speak on behalf of Ezra Bond, I was never, I was never mandated, and in all my, in all my life, I don't speak for Ezra Bond until I'm, I'm uh, mandated to speak on behalf of Ezra Bond. Doctor Ladoku is here; is also a member of Ezra Bond. There may be even the president is a member of Ezra Bond. I'm not competent to speak for on behalf of Ezra Bond where, where they are. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next one is a comment. Uh, yeah. It's just a comment from uh, Dr. Adelaide Adeniro. I don't know. He didn't recognize himself as Dr. He just put Ayo. Uh, <laughs> uh, he has the ASV. He has his PhD. Uh, thank you for your comments. Um, I'm creating the time to, to be here. 
a colleague did not go for inspection of a specific property because the area is uh, is prone to traffic, should that fact stop valuers for inspecting locations of the property? Uh, the, the inspection is to carry out valuation. So the question I will ask is, as the colleague done the valuation, uh, I think it's the colleague that should explain how he was able to carry out valuation because of traffic. But I think what I said was that traffic should be noted. It's part of the things you are inspecting. It is abstract. You may, you may think it is not in the property, but it affects value. That is what, what I meant. If it wasn't clear then, uh, I think I've made that clearer now. Then I did the next question, during inspection, can you report the actual time of the day you carried out your valuation? Um, it depends on the, if it's going to add value to the client, yes, but it doesn't absolve you of, uh, of uh, issues or problems if your valuation is not, uh, is, is not serving the purpose of the client. Uh, but later investigation showed that the tenant vandalized the property after the valuer left the site. Uh, well, well, those, that's the, I think that's the essence of having pictures. You, you can't just say you carried out a valuation before the uh, property was vandalized, before the tenant vandalized, without having pictures to back up what the property looked like when you inspected. Uh, picture the form part of the record of inspection. So, so I think that is, that's very simple. Um, our MNI, ESV Barrister Abubakar Abdukadiri MNI, FNIVS MNI. <laughs> yes. Um, I think this question is for ESV Abodari to, to answer. Uh, we are running short of time. Uh, All right, sir. Pastor Louis Afolabi. Pastor Louis Afolabi. Uh, he said, to what extent can we rely on an inspection report submitted by another colleague? Uh, the standard practice, even in the IBS, is that the person who inspected should be recognized in your report. The name of the person who inspected should be stated in your report. And if possible, the person should actually sign that valuation to, that report to to confirm that he carried out that inspection. Then how can we ensure safety during inspection? Uh, well, I'm not a security expert, uh, <laughs> but the advice is that you take care of your safety. Just, just the normal way you take care of your safety against uh, uh, street urchins, robbers, and all that, uh, you should not just think that things were what they used to be and you are called upon and you start dashing there without having some security considerations. Uh, well, one, of, one, of the, one of the things I do is really before I visit a place, the, the Google Maps, when, when you identify a, a property on Google Maps, you can actually see some pictures that some people have taken uh, within that property or around that location. That is that is that can assist you. Can give you an idea. Then also, when somebody calls me for a meeting, I hardly go for any meeting without doing any background check on who I'm going to meet. And if it becomes suspicious, the, if particularly if the person has no identity in this age, I if you don't have any identity online, I I become suspicious of. Uh, of such people, so so there are there are so many things uh, that one one can do. Uh, valuation of a dam, especially the calculations. Uh, yes, we are bothering. I think Reels Academy should note this uh, on valuation of dam. So and okay, I think a subsequent master class, a subsequent master class, we will look at we look at that. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, sir. So um, I know quite a number of our other participants have questions to answer. So what I'm going to say is that please 
uh, we will share our email address in the comment section so that you can send um, all other questions that you might have and then we will forward to, to the speaker so you can answer them for time. Okay, so I'd like to give uh, ESB Kamar Dindawal about a couple, of, about two minutes to to share, to give his vote of thanks on behalf of uh, Reels Academy. ESB Kamar Din, please, would like to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, first, on behalf of Reels Academy, I will want to appreciate God for making this program a reality and also a huge success. Uh, our profound gratitude goes to the president of our institution. He, he has shown a lot of time that the, he has led in many ways to show to us that learning, training and retraining is very important in the sustainability of our profession. This is not the first time on different occasions when webinars like this are going on, you see him join as a participant. And sometimes when it's not recognized, when people don't know quickly and when they get to know and they, they bring him, you want to give him certain honor, you say no. So that shows his, uh, how humil how, uh, the high level of humility he has and how he valued knowledge. That said, I also want to uh, appreciate our sponsor, KSV Victor Adekunle Alunge. KSV Victor Adekunle Alunge is uh, somebody who is very close to Risk Academy. He believes in professionalism and standards. And all along, he has been standing truth to this. In many occasions, when we don't go to him, he finds out about what do we have. And when we throw any proposal to him, he shows interest in it and is always ready. Anything that will better the profession is always showing interest. Yes, Victor Adekunle Alunge, thank you very much. And uh, I also want to use this opportunity to say that, or to reiterate that we have, also, we have written letters to different sponsors because we know that a program of this nature must be consistent because just like the belief of our president that learning, training and retraining is what can sustain our profession. And this academy has taken this very important. So as much as possible, we'll continue program that when we finish this series, we are going to come up with other things again. And as much as possible, we we'll require senior members of the profession to always uh, to call to sponsor the program so that our profession can be good for you. So thank you, uh, here's your longer. Now the facilitator, uh, Mr. Ni, uh, here's Vini Ifaduju. I met here's Vini Ifaduju for the first time. I've been, I've been hearing about him. As a matter of fact, he signed my, uh, uh, I think he could sign my PPE results. But I've been hearing about him until I met him in 2016 in Calabar when I went for associate interview. And I remember he was in that panel. He threw a question to me. He asked me about several questions. And each time I provided answer to the question, I saw his facial expression. And I began to see a bit of unsatisfaction. I feel like, what is it? You know? Only for me to, after the interview, to find, find out about him, who he was, and I got to know that, oh, this is the popular name for the youth that I've been hearing about. So I'm not surprised at his performance. As a matter of fact, I was one of those who, saw, who uh, suggested him to be the facilitator of this session. Yes, we need if I do you. Thank you very much. You are one of those we see in this profession that makes the profession to be interesting to us. Thank you very much. Then other panelists, I have in the panelists, ESV and Professor Tunde Oladuku is our respected uh, father in the profession too. He guides us in many ways and he has been very close to the Risa Academy too. Thank you very much. 
uh, uh, Professor Ladukun. Then we, I also want to express our thanks to Mr. Sanusi, the anchor of this program. This is not the first yes. time. He has been anchoring several programs for us and uh, he has been doing fantastically well. Thank you very much, uh, ASB Sanusi. Then to my noble colleagues, I want to specially thank you for attending this program. You see, like my president said earlier, that, that we can have this kind of turnout shows that we value knowledge. And because we have president that values knowledge, so what do you expect? Thank you very much for attending this program. From time to time, we are going to be in calling you for programs of this nature. Please, let's attend. Remember that it is free to you. It is a cost to this academy, and it is a cost to ESV Victor Alonge that has sponsored this program. So for this tunnel that we have, it is very impressive, and we really thank you for attending the program. We hope that this way, uh, this way also uh, encourage many other people after today when they hear the, how impactful it is to attend the next one. And at any point in time, I hope that one will call you, you will always uh, uh, attend the program. So thank you very much, everybody, for attending. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, ESB Kamaruddin Lawa. And I also equally want to say very, I want to say thank you to everyone for being a part of this uh, webinar. Like I said at the start, this is a six series webinar, okay? And this is the second series. So we still have from the third to the sixth coming up. So we will update you on the specific dates when this um, series will be, be coming up. <laughs> So I'd like to express my appreciation to the His Excellency, the President of this noble profession, um, ESV Sir Chief Emmanuel Okaswiki for, for joining us. I also want to express my appreciation to the second Vice President of this noble profession, ESV Victor Alonge. And I also want to thank our speaker for today, ESV Ni Fadudu. We really want to say a big thank you to you for being a part of this uh, webinar and sharing your wealth of, uh, from your wealth of knowledge. We really appreciate that we have wealth of knowledge and experience. We want to thank you for sharing that with us. On our panelists, Dr. Ladoku, I want to say thank you to you, sir, for joining us for this uh, webinar. We thank you very much. Dr. Samson Agbato, we want to say thank you to you as well for being a part of this. Uh, ESV Kamaldin Lawal as well, we say thank you to you too for joining us. And of course, to the Director of Studies of Rivers Academy, ESV Olale Kwabo Deren, the visionary of this uh, training center, I want to say thank you to you too for, for making our time for, 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 for today. I want to say thank you to you. So to our participants, we look forward to seeing you again during the third series of this webinar. Until that time, I want to say bye-bye from me and God bless everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much and have a nice day. You too, sir. Thank you, my president. Thank you, uh, look, our able president, sir. And regards to everyone. Thank you. Yeah, we have to perform more.